Hello, church family. Pastor Jim Kahn as we continue the study of Psalms, June the 8th. We're go so we're going to look at Psalms chapter 8 today, and uh, I'm going to begin right off. Very short psalm, nine verses. I know you're going to recognize a lot of these verses, and you've heard them before. It's a great song of worship. It's a psalm that I would urge you to commit this to memory and study and prayer. You can learn a lot about God and about the dignity of mankind in this psalm. Uh, David, the writer of the psalm, uses a literary device known as a, an inclusio, which means that verses 1 and verse 9, the beginning and the end of the psalm, are the same. Lord, our Lord, how magnificent is your name throughout the earth. David is not being redundant when he says, Lord, our Lord. He uses two different words in the Hebrew for the word God. The first word would be Yahweh, to a reverent, holy, almighty God. And the second word would be, uh, Lord, would be Adonai. And so we might say and rephrase this a little bit sharper by saying, Yahweh, our king, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And I know that in most of your English translations, the word Yahweh, the first use of the word Lord would be written in all capital letters. You can always pick out that word when you see it written that way. And then David continues, verse 1, he says, You have covered the heavens with your majesty. God's majesty and power and glory have covered all of his creation. And in particular, his majesty is manifested in two ways. In verse 2, from the mouths of infants and nursing babies, you've established a stronghold on account of your adversaries, in order to silence your enemies. God displays his power through the faith and simple language of young children. They can display the majesty of God. Karl Barth, great New Testament theologian, and by many standards today would be considered liberal, but Karl Barth did defend the Christian faith in the face of Nazi Germany in the dark days of World War II. After the war, Karl was asked by... Um, student, theological student, what was the greatest thing that he ever learned in his years of studying the New Testament? He said, the greatest thing I ever learned in the New Testament, I learned as a child, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Karl Barth, the great mind of the New Testament, that was the greatest truth, a simple truth that he learned about God. God can use these simple truths to defeat the enemies of God. And then he says, in verse 3, when I observe your heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you set in place, what is a human being that you remember him? The psalmist says, look, look at all creation. When I look up at night and see the vastness of the universe, and I look at a little tiny human being, I, I'm, I ask the question, what is, what is it that you would remember a human being in all of that? And, and then it says, a son of man, that you look after him. So God's glory is is that in all of his power and majesty, he has picked mankind, and then he gives a special blessing to mankind. And, and he tells us he's given that in three different ways. He said, first of all, you made him a little less than God and crowned him with glory and honor. You made him ruler over the works of your hands and put everything under his feet. In all of this vast creation, he created man as a little less than the angels, in the image of God. So God has shown special blessing to man. He's manifested his power by making mankind in the image and the likeness of God. And then the second thing is he crowned him with glory and honor. So mankind, every person is crowned with God's glory and honor. And then mankind has been made ruler over the works of your hands. You put everything under his feet. So God has given mankind dominion over the earth. Now, sin has damaged that dominion. But nonetheless, God has placed him over all that's in the earth. That's a powerful position for man. So if you ever think that mankind has no worth before God, just remember that all of creation is given the dominion by mankind. And then he says in verse 7, all the sheep and all the oxen, as well as all the animals in the wild, the birds of the sky and the fish of the sea, they pass through the currents of the seas. Mankind displays the glory of God in his dominion, in his crowning with glory, and in being made in the image of God. And then David concludes the psalm, indeed, Lord, our Lord, 
How magnificent is your name throughout the earth. What a blessing that God has blessed man in this particular way. Thank you. God bless you. Have a good day.